Hello, people of the present, this time, for, for anyone who's watching us live, and uh, people of the future, or whoever is watching a recording. Let's start drawing uh, lizard people. Now, this is um, a red-green race, so uh, a red-blue race, rather. Red is the color of um, um, fearless attacks, going right in, into battle and um, uh, red tends to attack and just attack, they're the aggressive strategy and uh, yellow kind of uses any trick in the book to achieve its goals, they can uh, try to manipulate their opponent, they can start make them discard cards or uh, sacrifice creatures, they're manipulative. So a red-green race, sorry, red-yellow, red-yellow race would um, use both uh, of these two colors uh, strategies and um, I thought lizards would uh, work best for this task because uh, um, if you think about dinosaurs, they uh, car carnivore dinosaurs, they have these uh, huge uh, fangs and they're predators, but uh, snakes on the other hand are sneaky and uh, slither, so maybe something that uh, um, halfway a dinosaur and a snake and of course is somewhat humanoid should work for this race I don't know what to call them yet uh, let's see what I come up with I'm thinking they can have a long neck so they can look around corners they're more of a sneaky race as I just said and maybe they can be leaner and uh, maybe not extremely skilled fighters so uh, let's uh, this is a kind of uh, neutral face not really menacing uh, for a uh, lizard anyway start with something like this it's just a lizard head maybe they can wear long robes Hmm. Let's draw some shoulders, uh, some arms. Now the arms, maybe they can be like, oh, okay, yeah, they should definitely have claw hands, like a few claws here, maybe one small, two small claws here, something like this. Sorry, I need to always check if my stream is up. Yeah, it is. Perfect. So yeah, these these kind of claw hands, and also, yeah, let's not draw the uh, garments right now. I'm I'm trying to figure out the look of the creature. So uh, robes will only hinder that. Okay, if they are a little humanoid, then they should have. No, actually, I don't like. Uh, uh, you know, regular human legs. I'm thinking they can have, you know, like raptor legs, something like this, or along those lines, with huge claws, something. Let's draw, draw a small version, okay. Nice long tail. I don't know. What do you think? <sighs> Nobody in the chat. Okay. Well, I'll continue talking as if 
there's uh, hundreds of people watching because that's what you're supposed to do when you stream, right? You need to pretend like uh, there's a, a crowd watching so that someone can actually uh, pop in and, uh, and uh, you know, be entertained. All right, so if this is... Take this on. Right. Uh, this is the. Yeah, uh, the shape is not perfect. Yeah, some something doesn't look right. Um, maybe the legs should be a little bigger. They're not really. Uh, I mean, they they should be able to fight for themselves. They are part red, and red likes to fight, so. This is uh, maybe a better representation. Okay, I like this long neck. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, something like this. Uh, it's starting to look like, uh, if, I don't know if you've heard of this Viashino, Viashino, I don't know how to call them. They're a race of lizards in Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah, it's better if they are different. Let's try different types of heads. Now this, let's get rid of this. Let's try different heads. Uh, so, eyes on the side, right? Lizards have eyes on the side, don't they? I think so. And then a long triangular snout. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking to giving them a more angular look. Now this this neck and the neck. Okay, if this is the skull let's draw a simplified skull i don't know how to draw skulls okay uh just a side view this would be the neck, uh, what's it called? The verte vertebrate, verte vertebrae. Something like that. Uh, yeah, wait, so maybe the head will be more angular. Let's change that, make it more pointy on this specimen. <laughs> now it looks a little bit like a gecko. Let's fix that now. Small eyes generally mean uh, that a person is uh, evil for some reason. Uh, small eyes are a symbol of uh, villains in uh, comic... in just... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, cartoons, generally. Okay, let's elongate this face, make it a little more lizard-like. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's... Uh, Where do we put the eyes? Do we put them back here? Oh, what? Whoops. If we put the eyes back here, okay, it looks stupid. Maybe down, looks stupid also. Yeah. It's hard to design creatures. Now let's give this guy some nice 
eyebrows, not maybe, not eyebrows, but um, eyebrow muscles, so they can have uh, all kinds of different emotions. Like a nice... Wow, it's starting to look extremely ugly. Uh, okay, oh, let's redraw it. I tend to draw three-quarter views because uh, they show the most of the face of a character. All right, now. Oh, maybe males can have a crest. Usually males are the ones that show off their fabulous features to the females, at least in the animal kingdom. Well, in the human world also, sometimes. It's just a lizard. Hmm. Maybe if you try to make it a little more human. Okay, so let's start, start by drawing human proportions. You know, eyes. No, his mouth, ear, and just make it lizardy. I think we'll end up with Voldemort. Yeah, you have to elongate the head, the snout. It just won't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. All right, let's go with something a little more dinosaurian than like this. It's becoming a little crowded in here. Okay. okay, so this, yeah, I like this drawing the best for now. Okay. Oh, somebody, somebody's watching. Who is it? Say something in the chat. Oh, there's somebody. Who is it? It's saying two people are watching right now. Did you leave already? Oh, no, come on. I'm drawing lizards. That's incredibly entertaining. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's looking more like a skull lizard. So let's go inside and fix the problem. Make a nice, nice big eye. And a nice, you know, these. Uh, almost dragon-like eyebrows, not eyebrows, just eyebrow muscles. I need to keep the chat up so I can see if somebody is uh, is in the stream. I think there is somebody. Somebody is watching. Who is it? Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. This looks disgusting. <laughs> uh, where are my references? I keep references here. I've got uh, this iguana here. And uh, he, you know, you, if you want to draw an, an animal or a creature that's based off of an animal, then, oh, look at this. This is an interesting guy. You need to keep looking at uh, reference photos. So yeah, this is pretty interesting actually. Let's keep this one up. And uh, so, for example, this lizard that I just showed you has nice spikes almost everywhere. Yeah, it has spikes. I haven't spot. I haven't thought of spikes.
Okay, yeah, this is this is getting somewhere. Don't know about the mouth yet. Yeah, okay, okay, I can see this. I can see this. Please remember though that this is a pretty rough sketch. I will be improving upon it. It's just a way, um, first kind of um, first impressions of the race that we're designing here. Now let's talk about random stuff. Uh, Star Wars, <laughs> of course. Uh, now, some people have compared my game to S Star Wars because there aren't that many uh, space fantasies, or at least well-known space fantasies, um, fantasy games or space fantasy anything, except for Star Wars and uh, that's, is Battlestar Galactica considered fantasy or is it science fiction? I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I like to uh, always sh tell the disc dis show the difference between space fantasy and uh, uh, science fiction. And my game is space fantasy because as soon as you say it's science fiction, now you have to uh, start to, uh, making it more sciencey, making references to the real world and real scientific discoveries and whatnot. Okay, I like this profile. Uh, let's just take this. Oh, have I forgotten? I I usually just um add a new layer and then draw everything on the new layer but this time i forgot and i drew everything on the background layer and that's not what i want because i usually after drawing a design i create a layer beneath it and uh, paint beneath it so you can still see this sort of uh, pencil work Let's create a new uh, project. I don't know if this will work actually. I've never. Huh? Yeah, it works perfectly. Let's add a new layer right away. Oh, it's already on a new layer. Perfect. Uh, move, transform, sphere transform. Nice. Can you see the guy? Think so can you see it okay let's check <laughs> yeah okay it's working perfect wow it's working for so much time without crashing that's already an improvement okay now this guy looks like he's buff so let's give him a buff body now this might be a red uh, specimen, let's say, okay. So this is a more human-like torso with my, probably like human hands. The hand isn't in its right place, probably. More to the back here. Something like this. I'm being very quick, of course, because I don't want to waste too much time on a design that maybe won't be even used. Okay, this is a long hand, but maybe I should <laughs> learn anatomy first. I mean, I know anatomy, but learn to draw good anatomy. Come on. I mean, who cares? It's perfectly fine. And uh, of course, it mustn't have human hands. Let's give him two claws or three claws. Two claws for now. So 
so more human-like forearms. Pecs, stuff. And the legs, as I've, as we've discussed, they can be these more animal-like legs with long parts. Of, I don't know how they're called, these parts. Anyway, something more like this. Sa, 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 prova, 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 sa. Uh, should be working, yeah. See, okay, everything's working, okay. I'm back, I'm back. Don't worry, people, I'm back. Anyway, I was saying, Mr. Not Mr. Uh, Sir Nessie, that uh, it's a Wacom tablet, Wacom uh, Cintiq, and uh, I don't know how much of this you got. I'll just repeat myself. Uh, it's a uh, Cintiq 24 HD. Uh, it used to be the latest model. Now there's a touch model, and uh, I'm assuming that you can touch, you know, paint with your fingers and all of that, which is cool, of course. But it costs twice as much as this one. Uh, if you like drawing, oh, okay. Is this working? Come on, don't. No, it's working. Okay, it's working. Uh, if you're starting out, don't waste. Uh, too much money on, on a Cintiq. You can uh, get an Intuos or a Bamboo, uh, a cheaper tablet, and it would work almost as well. It's, it, look, it works, they work really well. I, I've used them. <sighs> okay, sorry guys. Let's get this over with. I'm almost done with this design. Let's just draw some random muscles here and uh, I think this design is okay ah no I, I am not finished with the design I need to at least draw a, a front view of the face if not the entire body at least of the face so there's another hand here okay it's there nice perfect another leg here okay uh, let's zoom in on the leg Okay, the leg can have these large claws. Sir Nessie, I think you also applied for a um, a deck, right? You also, uh, they're almost ready. I already said, um, Mr. Blitze, about the decks. Uh, they're not really almost ready. I'm just saying that they're almost ready, so I'll finally start working on them. Oh, there's, I'm going through so much stuff right now. Um, university is catching up. Um, it's becoming harder to do the videos for YouTube. I still have no footage for the video that needs to go up tomorrow. Uh, fortunately, tomorrow is, uh, you know, that today is Mother's Day, right? Uh, not Mother's Day, uh, wo Woman's Day. Uh, and uh, in Russia, if a celebration uh, ha happens to be uh, Sunday, then they just say, okay, Monday, the next day, is also um, a holiday. Because uh, they don't like to work and they say, oh, what? If uh, Women's Day is uh, Sunday, uh, when are we going to celebrate Sunday? Or, you know, it's just weird. They don't want to work, so they just add another holiday on top. Uh, the point I'm trying to say is that tomorrow I'll have the entire day to uh, film episode 9. And uh, I don't know exactly what it will be about. Probably about the uh, uh, cards in the basic set. I have 10 strategies already laid out. This guy would be part of the red-yellow strategy. Um, um, I don't know what to call his race. Just let's call them uh, lizards for now, because they're lizards. 
and the face doesn't match up at all with the profile. Hmm. Okay, uh, something like, ugh. It's really hard, you know, to uh, draw, to commentate on what you're drawing, and then know what you're drawing at the same time. Uh, I'm not the best at concept art. I've done it a few times, but uh, it's not my thing, you know. I'm studying to become an architect. Of course, I won't become an architect. Number one, because I don't want to. Number two, because it's incredibly hard if you, if you want to. Oh, yes, uh, Ternesi, will be able to make a stream available on Twitch or YouTube when you're finished and uh, I won't be able to catch all the stream. It will be available on Twitch at least. And I think I'll use the best parts of this stream uh, for tomorrow's episode of uh, Let's Make a Trading Card Game. Uh, it will be available here. I don't know if it counts as one stream because I've disconnected 12 times or something. Uh, so maybe it will be divided into many parts. I hope not. Uh, if there's a way to put all the parts together, then I, I will do that tomorrow or in the near future. Okay, now this is starting to look like a lizard. And it's starting to look like the guy that I just drew. So, uh, right, something like this. I'm content with this rendition. Let's, are you bored? of this uh, creature. I think I am. Let's start drawing something else. In a few moments, <laughs> let me finish up a little bit. Yeah, I think he looks good. Lisgonian. Lisgonian. Yeah, something to do with lizards. Uh, now, let's talk about what they should be. They are mainly thieves and um, attack people from the back. You know, they are ruthless. Ruthless. They are carnivores. What else can I say about them? They, I re honestly haven't invented uh, most of the things that they do. I know they're red, yellow, if that helps. <laughs> so maybe they, on the surface, can be, you know, diplomat, diplomats or politicians and be all nice and uh, talk about democracy and about uh, uh, what's it called when you're not uh, going to war? Diplomacy. Have I said diplomacy? I don't remember. Um, and then they just stab you in the back or poison you or something. Okay, enough of this one. Let's save as. Okay, yeah, for, I don't know, let's call it, I don't care. Make a new file. 2000 by 2000 is, is about right. 1000 pixel by, pixel by 2000. Now we have a choice. Uh, we have pretty much done lizards, okay. Uh, we have uh, done uh, squids, plants we don't need to do. Robots are okay, we don't need to design robots, we know what robots are. And rocks uh, are pretty much go golems, so we don't need to design those. We have a choice between insects and bulls. Uh, it's not really insects and bulls, they are humanoid creatures, both of them. and. Uh, some, the bull ones are based off of bulls and maybe rhinoceroses or maybe elephants and insects are based off of insects. I don't know which one, which one, 
basically, I'm saying red or yellow, which one do you choose? We've just made the yellow red race, so now we uh, uh, have to design a companion for them. Personally, I would choose red because it's a little easier, I think, to design a bull than to design an insect. Insects have all these moving parts. I don't see, oh, yellow sounds like a good start. Okay, yellow it is. Now, uh, let's see what kind of insect this race should be designed after. Now, cockroaches, for example, uh, they are the bottom feeders. They are pretty disgusting. And this race has to be a little disgusting. So cockroaches could be a start. Also, maybe praying mantises, praying mantis, mantis, mantis. Uh, I have a picture of a praying mantis here, just in case. I have this. They have very unique heads, so maybe we can use them. Oh, what's this? This is, I don't know what this is, is Photoshop madness. Um, let's look at cockroaches. Cockroaches, yeah, they're pretty disgusting. They don't have really any distinguishable features in the face department. I like the face of the praying mantis. It's really alien-like. You know, aliens usually have these big eyes. I mean, they don't have, they are portrayed as having big eyes. What other insects are there that, that are disgusting and that uh, can do anything to uh, destroy an opponent? I don't know, maybe like scorpions, even though scorpions are not technically insects, they are fine. They have an interesting design. Uh, let's see the chat. I should always keep the chat open. Where is oh, okay, it's here. Oh, <gasps> three people. We have three people watching. Oh, that's a record. I mean, two was a record. Uh, but three is even more. Thank you. This is so nice. It's so different than watching, uh, than having a stream with just one person. Okay, scorpions, here we are. There we are. Oh, they also don't have really humanoid faces. Oh, this is enormous. It's okay, let's try and design something. That's a good design challenge. First, let's start not with the face, but with the general shape of the uh, of the you know creature. So, if, for example, it has a face and then a torso, but then an abdomen that it's like like this, then it's not really humanoid. It's more centaurian, centaur-like, and have you know six legs maybe wings. So this part can be a little more human and have like arms here. I don't know, maybe two pairs of legs or three pairs of legs. This, yeah, it's like having a centaur that is uh, an insect. Uh, also, let me put up the chat so I know if you guys are saying anything. Uh, if we do this type of body structure, then I guess they 
this yellow race uh, isn't supposed to go and battle, you know, in, in inside of ships. They're more of a controlling race, the ones that are behind the scenes and operating all of the battling. So maybe this could work if we try something more humanoid. I have no idea what to... Okay. Nice. And what's the... What's the insect? I will be designing an insect alien race creature. And I don't know how it's going to go. Now, if we go by a more cockroachy approach, no, I don't like the cockroachy approach. Let's go for a more mantis look. So, huge, large, big, enormous, gigantic eyes. Hmm, you know, I'm just kind of. <laughs> That's a nice look. Uh -huh. Mr. Blitzer says, I really like the claws of the scorpion. They portray a defensive aspect of the insect and could be used as a shield of some sort to block enemy troops. So possibly a higher defense health stat. Yes, yes, that's that's a good point. But claws usually are for attacking uh, or self-defense actually, yeah, too. Um, crab claws or or scorpion claws. Where are our scorpions? Wait a second. Let me do a few manipulations here. So this way I can see the chat and our scorpions. Yeah, they look very defensive. That's true. Hmm. I don't know. They're not really a defensive race. At least not uh, the yellow. The yellow color is not really de that defensive. Blue is more defensive, and and uh, green can have big buff things. Yellow is more of yeah, you know, just sneaking in damage whenever you can, exploiting the flaws of their opponent. And uh, just doing nasty things. I I don't really know what to say about yellow. Yeah. Okay. No, the mantis is an interesting looking creature. Has this long <laughs> neck? It's not a neck, of course. It's a it's a body. It's a body. But if we put shoulders here and uh, maybe yeah maybe you can give them nice big claw hands something like this maybe this head is a little too mantis like be a little more alien <laughs> that will be It's actually really hard to design this. Maybe this wasn't the right idea for a stream. Um, I have to talk a lot more than I thought I would have to. Okay, so this is head, torso, and then abdomen. A nice fat bottom. With Two wings. I think they have wings, right? Do they? Or don't they? Are these wings? They are wings, I think. Yeah, small, but they're present. Okay. As for the face, 
Let's try adding some features. Nostrils. It, it looks really funny, especially with this mustache. I, I added for no reason. No, maybe the body structure works, but the head definitely looks a little too funny and uh, weird to, for a whole race of creatures. Maybe if the eyes are black, would it make it a little more intimidating? Yeah, I guess. Just it just looks like he has shades now. <laughs> Okay. Oh, what if we give it a spider's face? Not that spiders generally have a face. But if we give them like six eyes, for example. Like this. And a flat, kind of fat head. I'm being quiet, sorry. <sighs> now that's something completely opposite of what I'm doing. Yeah. Let's see again. Uh, Okay, we have mantises, mantis eye, mantis eye, mantis there, cockroaches. Now I'm thinking, do we really need to make them a humanoid? Because this head, this face, doesn't look anything like a, a human's or a vertebrate face. If we put in a uh, spider. Again, spiders are not insects. They have these weird faces. Oh. Okay, now now we're getting somewhere. First of all, this is extremely cute for a spider. <laughs> they have forward pointing pointing eyes, which is a good thing for looking a little more humanoid. Let's try a face that looks a little more like this, and it's a little more square, right? Little tiny jaws here. Oh, they have a lot of jaws here. And uh, Now this looks a little too much like a spider, of course, because I just took and drew a spider. Maybe if you try to morph the human skull into a face that is more uh, alien-like and more insect-like. We morph it. Okay, so this, these are eyes. Okay, okay, okay. This is something interesting. How about a snail? 
like face with human features. A snail face is almost alien like already. Yeah. I can agree with that. A snail is very alien like. They have these four antennae. And a huge. Oh, I don't know what's it called. It's like a leg than this. A, a snail like face with human features. A snail like face. Oh, let's put up snail then. Let's see what a snail face looks like. I don't know. I hope you know what you're saying. Let's just put snail face. <laughs> uh, look at this. Topmost result. I like this image. Let's put it up uh, in this. I have two monitors, one to keep in touch with the chat and one for drawing. Let's cover the chat for a second. Now, I that's actually a really interesting look. Animal, yeah. So let's make it like this. All right, it starts to look like Pikachu, right? <laughs> With the ears, except these are eyes. I guess we can have a snail race. They need to be very weak and slow, unless they're huge. Okay, let's try to draw a snail face with human features. You're asking for a lot. Let's try though. I... Okay. I like it so far. Okay, so a nose. <laughs> no, no, come on. This is silly. Oh, you mean human features, but not in the face. Human features elsewhere. Yeah, that can be. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean now. Okay, now a mouth can be something like this, right? Could be here, right? So, yeah, okay, I can see that. That's more of a blue yellow creature, I think. I don't see them as being really bad uh, in terms of, you know, evil. They're just a peaceful race of snail people. Maybe they're even fat. And oh, oh, and be like a Jabba the Hutt with with the maybe two arms here and a nice snail body or slug body rather let me put up the uh, chat real quick where are you uh, oh no you're here maybe not a nose yeah <laughs> i like you know, i like this design thank you mr blitzer this 
might be, if not a, a, an entire race, they can be a few uh, specimens, uh, yellow, blue of yellow book creatures. Of course, this needs to be, uh, the design needs to be finished up. But it can be something, yeah, something like this. This is getting really gathered, uh, really full of stuff. Nice. Okay, I'll I'll keep this then, and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll come up with a better design for the this um, insect race later. Nice, thank you. Okay, snail. I'll just write Mr. Blitte, so I'll, I'll know who to thank. T Z E H. The next episode, I'll have to thank you. Same as I don't care what. Perfect. Yes. New. Sometimes when you don't, oh wait, uh, new, yes, I didn't set the pixels. Sometimes when you don't, uh, when you're stuck, it's just better to move on, on and do something else, another design. This is what I'm doing right now. Uh, out of the three things that I wanted to do today, two, I mean, one was okay. Well, the first design was uh, this, actually, no, this creature, this, uh, a lizard person. Of course, this one is naked. They will have clothes, some of them. Uh, the second thing was a little non... Uh, I mean, we, we deviated. We, we created a, a race, but not the one I was looking for. And let's get rid of this one. And now we need to design some bull people. Sorry, uh, not bull people, but um, something that uh, a, a red race of creatures that are proud, are aggressive, if provoked, they are have a burning fire inside of them, you know. So, by nostrils, if they're provoked, then they are extremely powerful. Hippos, bulls, these, these sort of creatures, elephants. Uh, of course, when you think of a bull person, you think of a, a rhinoceros, uh, or you think of a um, minotaur or a tauren in uh, World of Warcraft. And I want to create a, something that is not a minotaur, something unique. Uh, I kind of have already an image in my head, so let's see. If, if if it looks if I can make it ah it's really hard to talk anyway so eyes nose this already looks like a rhino Okay, she, uh, see you in 30 minutes, it's okay. Uh, I'll be here, I think, in 30 minutes still. I, I don't know how long these streams will be. Uh, depends on how tired I am. Uh, good thing I brought some coffee with me. So I'm always uh, active. I also hope that this isn't too boring to watch because of the other people on Twitch, they play games. I am just talking and, and showing to you a, a, an image that uh, maybe isn't even that pretty. Uh, but I think 
this is harder to do than playing games because uh, it is it just is come on i'm creating something new uh, and it's not like this experience was made specifically for me to have fun now i'm adding these pig like ears and maybe horns i I don't know, should I add her horns or not? If you have this, this is getting a little cartoony. Okay. Maybe a little horn here. What was I saying? I don't remember. I was saying that I've thought about streaming a gameplay if that uh, receives more views on Twitch and that of course it does oh, come on are we kidding here um, then maybe I can just play a few of the trading card games that uh, I've been inspired by that I know how to play and uh, stream that and uh, analyze their their how they're designed. Oh, come on, <laughs> let's pull up some pictures of bulls and pigs and and whatever. So I have something to work off of. Uh, let's get rid of this snail snail face. Uh, so let's put a bull here. And uh, okay like this one let's uh, look at uh, rhinos okay wow yeah they have a really charismatic face and let's look at um, bulls rhinos pigs nah it's more or less like a rhino but with a pig face Elephants. Nice. And yes, this is this is nice image. Okay, let's put it here over the chat. Sorry, I won't be seeing your messages. Uh, oh no, I, I can I can still see your messages here. Okay, I'm fine. Let's pull up the rhino picture. Okay. This is really cartoony, what I've drawn so far. So let's let's get a little more realistic. Okay, now by the way, I I'm pretty sure that I'm drawing extremely fast. So if if uh, I don't know what I'm saying, if uh, this is too slow for you, then uh, I guess art streams aren't really your thing. I'm not sure they're even my thing. Really hard to do these art streams. Uh, the first hour is fine, and then I just my brain just uh, falls apart. Okay, so this can be uh, I'm just trying out different shapes. Now this is a too big of a horn, of course. It's incredibly big. I don't know why I put this horn right here. Maybe if I put a little little horn here. Nice big nose. Nice expressive eyebrows, cheekbone. Yeah, I like to keep them somewhat humanoid. So forward facing eyes. This, uh, wait. This nose here, I don't know. Does it even need a horn? Yeah, I think so. Maybe here on top. And 
right there. This still looks cartoony, but uh, we're getting somewhere. Let's see. Uh, uh, profile, thanks. Let's see a profile. On this thing. Hmm. How about horns in here on, on, on the head? They look a, a little more demon like, a little more cow like. No, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so. Okay, nostrils. Big, large nostrils for breeding. This horn. Of course, only males will have horns. Or maybe not. Actually, I don't know. Let's see. This guy here. Here, this is way easier to design than a, a an insect because, of course, we are very similar to these animals. We, I mean, vertebrates. Not only vertebrates. We are both mammals, and we have skulls. It's easier to bend the facial features when you know at least where they are. So designing a bull man is easier than designing a, a praying mantis man. Okay, oh, oh this is this is pretty nice. I don't know about the the jaw. Oh, it looks all right, even even like this. Nice, nice male. Maybe we can try and, and design a female. Let's take the three-quarter view and uh, put it away for now. Now let's draw a full face view. On fuss. Let's get rid of this hippo that I have on the other screen. Let's draw. It looks a little bit innocent like in a shrek kind of way where it's a big uh creature and looks dumb you know looks menacing but really isn't except in my case they need to be menacing they need to be war machines and i have already designed a lot of these cards and the, these bull people i don't know what to call them uh if you have any ideas on the race, on what to call the race, you can uh, write in the chat. I'll see it. Uh, they are vicious cr creatures. They have to attack always. And not only they have to attack, they have to um, board ships if they are on the same space as them. Which, by the way, I changed boarding again. It used to be an ability. Now it's not even an ability. Anything can board a ship. Any creature can board a ship if um, it's, it's not even an ability anymore. Um, how, how should I explain it? 
Now, creatures can go inside of ships. Uh, and uh, to attack, it used to be uh, that uh, when a creature is in a ship, it cannot attack. The ship has to attack. And uh, it's still true to a certain degree, but you can choose if the ship attacks or the creatures attack. If, of course, they have to be all in the same space. There's a... Um, I'm assuming you all know... Oh, hello, welcome back, Mr. Belitze. They look very menacing, thank you. <laughs> I was just explaining that I changed the mechanic for... Uh, boarding. It's not even a mechanic. I mean, it's, it's a mechanic, but it's not a keyword. And uh, any creature can board a ship if it's on a ship and it's attacking another creature inside of another ship in, on the same space. So you can choose, for example, you have a ship with three uh, creatures inside and uh, you move into a place where there's another ship uh, of your opponent with a creature inside. You can choose whether to attack it uh, with your ship or you can move creatures from your ship to his or hers and attack the, uh, the creatures using the creatures. You know, you can board it. It's kind of hard to explain without showing you the actual board and how it looks, uh, especially because I haven't exactly figured out how the wording should be. Uh, but now that it's there, now that it's not an ability anymore, uh, you can have uh, cre uh, ships that cannot be board boarded. Oh. They can have this ability that prevents uh, creatures from boarding them. <laughs> this looks like Satan <laughs> or a camel or something. Yeah, it looks kind of like. Uh, a weird uh, cross between uh, a bull and uh, an orc. I guess you can kind of call them the orcs of, of my game. Oh, I forgot the, I forgot this thing. Forgot the horn. Now I have a question. No, wait. I don't know whether these horns are necessary or not. They might not be even necessary. I don't know, they look kind of... They look okay on, on the creature. Give, give them bigger jaws. Either way, I think this is a solid design. Maybe I won't use it, but it is solid. Maybe. Yeah. Blah, it was better before. I don't know if you understood what uh, how this boarding mechanic works now. But uh, I just thought of it today on the Metro uh, while I was going back home. And uh, it really streamlines, streamlines the process of, of battles. And it used to be that creatures weren't really useful. Uh, I mean, they're useful to operate ships and the ships are the things that uh, attack uh, your opponent and uh, deal damage and do, do everything. So it didn't make sense for a creature to cost a lot of resource. You, if you, if it doesn't matter if it's big or, or, or you can just uh, play a smaller, cheaper creature inside of a huge ship and then attack your opponent and win every time. But if um, you do that with the current rules, your opponent can have a small ship, but have a, pretty powerful boarding crew and they can move their creatures onto your ship, destroy your creatures, take control of your ship 
And so you need to have a balance now. Uh, or you need to have certain ships that uh, have range so they cannot be bored um, because they're, they're in another space and attacking from far or some other weird strategy. And I kind of fixed it uh, earlier with the boarding, with the thing that I explained in my previous video in episode seven. Uh, but now I think it's it's the the rule is a lot more balanced, a lot better. Let me drink a little more coffee. Uh, let's draw another version of the same creature. Uh, actually, let's draw a female. This would be quite interesting. It doesn't have to. It doesn't need to look like a cow. I don't want them to look like a cow, and they need to be feminine, which is also interesting. So no horns, first of all. This is actually an interesting design challenge to make a female version of a creature that's extremely manly. Okay, starting to look like a chimp. Oh, this is disgusting. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is just terrible. Oh my God. Let's try a profile first. With the squid people, it wasn't that difficult because they kind of look feminine already, and the male had these nice tentacles that uh, were worked as a mus mustache. Um, oh, I know, they can have maybe not as protruding snouts. And. Uh... Oh, look at that! Of working. Okay, bigger eyes. Maybe bigger ears, or maybe no. Should they have hair? Maybe. Maybe yes. Uh, this is starting to look a little like a furry creature. You know, like there are these weird people that like anthropomorphic animals. Yeah, ugh. I mean, I don't have anything wrong with, uh, with furries. No, the head is just too empty without horns, so let's make them horny as well. Okay, yeah, this can work as a female. And it's not like we'll see many of them, because um, probably the males will be the ones fighting. And uh, that's why they'll probably all be males. Except like in, in background shots, or maybe there can be some kick ass female cow people. Yeah, they look too much like cows. If they make them, there has to be a way to make them a little more alien like. Okay, let's, let's not draw the face. Front on. Maybe let's experiment with some more designs. Like, what if we make two 
horns here, or maybe tusks even. I'd give them tusks. Nice. Head here, man. Huge eyebrows. Okay, uh, I'm I'm being sloppy, but it's okay. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So what do you guys think about the next Star Wars? Um, Lucasfilm was bought by uh, Disney last year, and uh, they immediately said that they would be releasing more Star Wars movies. I'm assuming that, of course, everybody saw the uh, Star Wars Episode Seven trailer. Uh, I even made a small reaction on YouTube. I expected a little more, but on the other hand, what could I expect? It's a teaser trailer that came out more than a year, I think, before the movie comes out. And uh, it's good that George Lucas isn't uh, directing the movies. That's really good because I think well, while we can thank George Lucas for creating Star Wars, he kind of let it go a little too long and uh, he became more of a businessman than a creative person with a franchise. I feel even in episode six, with the Ewoks, he started creating creatures just so, well, I mean, not just so they could make uh, figures, but he had that in mind and it really escalated with episode one and two and three with the uh, Gungans and, uh, wait, something happened. Am I still online? Yes, I am. Perfect. Yeah, so much help, hype for the Star Wars in December. That's just... Uh, I <laughs> I know how you feel, man. Um, there's this site, um, StarWars7News.com, and every day, I think every day, they post news that's even remotely related to uh, Star Wars Episode Seven, And I, I've checked it every day for... I don't check it every day now, but for long periods of time, I've checked it. Uh, hashtag female bull equals Satan. Also, when watching your testing videos, I noticed you said the game can be rather long, lots of turns. You could add a mechanic where a creature or ship has a value, example four. Uh, so when it's destroyed, it was four health, etc. cetera. Uh, so it may result in a more strategic approach to winning, meaning not just diving in head first into battle. Um, the diving head first into battle thing, um, I've mostly, uh, what's it called, solved, uh, because there will just, the problem in those, in that test run uh, was that uh, um, there weren't really many defensive strategies or defensive cards that you could use in defensive strategies. Um, so the good thing about uh, going uh, trying to build your army as fast as possible and and um, going straight for the kill is that um, you have the speed advantage but the good thing about uh, exploring the galaxy for first uh, is that you can play more cards so if you have uh, three planets let's say and everyone uh, creates resource you can play three cards that cost two resource, one per each planet. And um, I really didn't explore and exploit that fact in uh, the previous version of the game. Um, I didn't, you know, design-wise, I didn't create cards that uh, benefited from that strategy. But right now I'm making a new um, set of cards that uh, has all of that figured out and um, essentially 
Yeah, I've almost fixed it. I'm pretty sure I fixed it. It's not a problem of the game. It was a problem of the cards and of the decks. And um, it's good that we're figuring these things out early. Um, when uh, something is destroyed, you lose four health. It, I don't understand really what you're saying here, Blit. In Magic the Gathering, if you play that, of course you have health, you have 20 health, and uh, the goal of the game is basically to kill your opponent, uh, to literally kill uh, the wizard that it's in, that's in front of you, the planeswalker. In my game, there is no, you don't have health as a, as a person, and uh, the goal of the game is to uh, capture your, your opponent's planet meaning that you destroy everything that's on it and uh, then you put something, some creature that, uh, you know, that's yours to uh, capture it. I've explored having health or uh, planets having health and it just doesn't work. It even, it elongates the game even more. Uh, and adding mechanics is, really um, a last resort when you have something that is simple and uh, doesn't work you first try to make it work and keep it simple because this is my game and any trading card game uh, that is worthy of, of the name is very complex and adding more uh, mechanics will only make it more complex and that's how since we're talking about star wars that's how the Star Wars trading card game died. It became way too complex. And uh, it just new players couldn't learn uh, the rules of the game. And uh, eventually older players uh, stopped playing because, you know, oh, you can play for a few years and then you get bored anyway. You need a constant flow of new people. And I'm rambling, but... Uh, the point is, I think I've figured out a way to fix the problem. I'm pretty sure it's fixed. Um, plus, I want, I want uh, uh, the opportunity for fast decks to exist. Because, for example, in Pokemon, the trading card game, there are no fast decks. Uh, even from set one, in the first set of Pokemon, there was a uh, Chansey. I don't know if you're an expert in Pokemon, <laughs> I am, uh, but uh, it's kind of hard to explain if you don't know the game. Essentially, there were certain things that you could do uh, to block your opponent from winning early. There were these big buff Pokemon that had so much life uh, that uh, there was no way that your opponent could win in three turns or you know in the first turns. So essentially, you killed off the strategy right away and you remain with defensive uh, controlling strategies and defensive uh, combo strategies and that that's okay but uh, you know i want there uh, there to be the uh, at least the opportunity the alternative of, of an aggressive strategy so you could at least try and building a deck um, that's aggressive but of course it doesn't. It doesn't have to. It uh, it can't sway too much on either side. You know what I'm trying to say. You need to be. There needs to be the defensive component as well. What am I drawing? Uh, let's just draw whatever. If you want to me uh, me to draw cartoons. I can do that. I'm getting really exhausted. These streams really take a lot out of me. Uh, let's drink a little more coffee. Uh, what did we do? We did a few things. This is a disgusting creature, actually. Uh, but interesting nonetheless. Um, if yeah, let's just draw for fun. If you have any requests, I can draw. We can have some fun. Uh, if you want to talk about the game, you know, if you have any 
other ideas, uh, please share. They're always well, uh, you know, they're always. Uh, my English is running low today. They're always. Bleh. Okay. Um, and. Uh, Although going back to the uh, the uh, problem that uh, Mr. Blitz uh, talked about, it is a legitimate problem. It, it, I mean, it is a legitimate concern that uh, the game could become just a question of who uh, is able to create. I mean, build the, the fastest ships and and play the. Uh, cheapest creatures and attack as fast as possible and win. It could come down to that, especially once uh, the creature, uh, especially once uh, I'm not the one creating the decks, but the people are the ones creating the decks. And uh, uh, that's a good thing to keep into account. You know, yeah, these are the things that really bother me and uh, keep me up at night. You never know, even if, it seems that the deck, the uh, game is incredibly balanced. It may happen that one guy figures out a combo and just ruins the game for everybody else. Because, okay, this is an extreme example, but uh, when Magic the Gathering first came out, uh, Alpha, the first set, had a few cards. Now, I, uh, I'm not, sh I don't know if all of you know Magic the Gathering, but I'm assuming that you do. Uh, there was a card called Fireball that cost X and a red. You are the one drawing. I am the one drawing, yes. Ah, Star Wars or Pokemon. <laughs> uh, okay, I I'll draw then whatever. I don't, let's just draw a doodle. I was saying, yeah, there were there was this card called um, Fireball, and it dealt X damage and cost X and a red. Then there was an incredibly broken card called Black Lotus, that costs zero and gives you three resource, three mana of any color if you uh, sacrifice it. And there was this third color, uh, third card called Channel, and. Um, it costs uh, two resource, and basically it said you can spend your life as if it were resource or mana in the case of, of Magic the Gathering. And you start the game with 20, re uh, 20 life, so essentially you could get 19 uh, mana in one turn, which is broken. Plus, of course, there was this uh, broken card called, called Black Lotus. And plus, there was no... Uh, limitations on how many uh, identical cards you could have in a deck. So someone figured out this very easy combo, which was uh, uh, called Channel Fireball. And uh, you play Channel, you play Fireball, and you play Black Lotus. You maybe play uh, 20 cards of each because you need a 60 card deck. And uh, just um, mix the cards draw seven and you have uh, two fireballs three black lotus and uh two uh channels okay you play a couple of black lotuses add resource use channel uh pay 19 life use fireball you win on turn one and you would win on turn one every time of course this is an extreme example because magic was the very first trading card game uh in the world so people didn't really know what what they were doing, and uh, and that happened. Of course, now I won't let that happen, even just because uh, you can't play more than three, or uh, rather four cards with the same name in, in a deck, so that already prevents a, uh, certain combos, but still there can be overpowered cards even with the limitations of, of having only 
uh, three cards of the same name in a deck. Even how long ago was Cowblade? A few years ago, maybe three years ago, I want to say. Uh, again, in Magic the Gathering, there was this call, card called uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. And uh, it was so overpowered that, um, first of all, it costs like $100 to buy one, which it's just insane for a piece of cardboard to cost $100. Um, secondly, I want to say like 80% of the decks that were winning had four Jaces, which is the maximum amount. And they ended up banning the card along with uh, another card that was overpowered. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. I guess even when you think you have everything figured out, someone can can uh, find a, a two card combo or something that can be exploited and, and win most of the games. Especially, I'm just one person. I can test with my friends oh, only a certain number of, of decks and of possibilities. I cannot cover every single thing that can happen in the game. I don't know what I'm drawing. Uh, let's draw Pokemon. Yay! Uh, guess who this is? This is a weird looking Pikachu. Yay! I think I should have lost a lot of weight in these past uh, few years. Seriously though, uh, I was thinking about starting to stream uh, trading card games. I own uh, Pokemon the Trading Card Game, the video game. I own uh, Magic the Gathering um, Chandelier. And I own uh, on Emulator. Everything is on Emulator. And uh, what's it called? Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Destined Duel Soul Duelist Yu-Gi-Oh! Soul. Um, and I like, first of all, trading card games. I, I love them. I, I'm making one, so <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. And thinking, since Twitch is a site for gamers and for people who play video games, maybe this should be, this could be the right place to um, experiment with playing video games. And not only playing them, while while you play, you can also um, analyze design flaws of, of the game, especially Yu-Gi-Oh, because Yu-Gi-Oh is, is not a well-designed game, in my opinion. Uh, Pokemon has a lot of flaws, too, and Magic has flaws, especially if you take older sets. Um, so I can take them apart and... Uh, Uh, find all sorts of flaws with the game, games. Oh. Yes, about ban lists. Uh, if they're necessary, of course, there some cards that will need to be banned. I hope that it doesn't come to ban lists. Because I, come on, if you buy cards and uh, it turns out that the best cards that you open uh, are banned and you cannot play in tournaments, come on, it's not fun. Um, I'll do my best to uh, design a game which, at least in the first years, uh, won't require ban lists. Although I have to say, Richard Garfield, which is the creator of Magic the Gathering, when he made the first set, uh, he knew that certain cards were overpowered. The Power Nine, for example, the Five Moxes, uh, Black Lotus, Time Walk, Time... something else, uh, Ancestral Recall, and uh, Time Twister, or I don't know, what they're, whatever these cards are, the Power Nine. He knew they were overpowered. 
but he thought that uh, a player would only own maybe five decks maximum of of uh, of um, magic cards, and he figured that oh those cards are rare. Maybe one person in a play group will have one or two of these uh, overpowered cards, it won't be a problem. And if it will be a problem, that means that the game is extremely popular. And if the game is extremely popular, uh, we can deal with uh, this, these small problems, uh, like uh, overpowered cards. Now, I don't, this is at least what Mark Rosewater says. Mark Ro Rosewater is the current uh, lead designer for Magic the Gathering. And uh, I don't know if that's true, honestly. Maybe it is true, but either way, that was a really good move for for um, Richard Garfield because, first of all, if you know that certain cards are overpowered and you're a newbie, if you're a new player, you want to open more packs and get those cards, and then you feel special. And uh, instead of you know uh, stop playing the game completely because you, you see, okay, the rare cards are more powerful, clearly. Um, this is just a ploy uh, for selling more packs. Um, back then, people didn't really know much about how trading card games could be used to uh, um, exploit it, rather for players to buy as many packs as possible. So, where was I going with this? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I was going like this. Uh, maybe I can have overpowered cards in the first set and do the same thing that Richard Garfield did and said, oh, if, if it turns out that there are problems, then that just means that the game is a hit. Oh, then everything is fine. No. We live in the 21st century with the internet and you can access the internet and know in seconds uh, if uh, your cards are worth anything, if they're playable or not. And uh, you can access information so quickly that uh, you can find out what the best cards are and uh, you can pretty much uh, realize that uh, um, if the strongest cards are ob objectively strongest cards, I'm just saying objectively strongest cards are rare, then it's just a, a way of exploiting the trading card game formula uh, for getting as many people to play as possible. I don't want to do that. So I'll try to keep it as balanced as possible because I honestly think that if a game is competitive and balanced, then more people will want to play it. And uh, I, I don't have to resort on uh, weird tactics, weird, um, no, marketing uh, tactics to sell the game. <sighs> I'm getting really sleepy. Now, if you're in America, then it's uh, it's like two or two p.m. something like that. Uh, it's eleven p.m. where I am. I could still go for an hour, maybe, but I need to find a way to do these streams so that uh, everybody can watch them and be uh, in the night in the, and not be sleepy. Okay, I think I've done enough doodling. Let's go back to creating um, uh, things related to the game. Now we have lizards. Okay, we have uh, bulls. Uh, insects, I kind of don't have. Plants, squid, you know, grain. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, fix uh, I have uh, created on my test stream last week uh, these squid people, this uh, race of creatures that are based off of squid. Where are they? Here. 
I just drew two images of them, and uh, I'm sure you've seen them if you've seen episode eight of Let's Make a Trading Card Game. Uh, I want to explore and expand on their designs and draw them from all different sizes, from the face, from the um, you know profile, and uh, all shapes and different sizes, because. I talked to a friend of mine. Now, you know Vasily is, is drawing uh, all, um, all the planets for me, but he already said that he is not that good with with the uh, creatures. And of course, that leaves me uh, to draw all of the creatures. And I have so much stuff to do that uh, I can't do all, I can draw all of the creatures. Um, and I found other um, friends of mine. There's this friend Ivan, and uh, he, in my opinion, is draws better than me. He is a professional. I mean, we're all professionals, but he draws better, in my opinion. So I decided that he can help me with the, the creature design. Uh, not the creature design, but the actual drawing of the cards. And I want to give him the best designs that I have in order for all of the creatures to look similar. I mean, to be consistent with each other. Let's open this here. How, do, how can we do this? Let's do it like this. Let's just copy and paste. Excuse me if my English is going all over the place, but it's really... Um, whoa, this is a huge drawing. I was about to draw uh, these creatures from the back and from the side, from the face and from the side, and uh, do all sorts of variants so that my friend uh, Ivan can use them as reference when he starts drawing uh, his own creatures. Plus I've talked to another my, one of my friends, uh, Nikita, and he's also uh, um, he also said he would help me with the game. Okay, so I like this race a lot of squid people. They are really well designed in my opinion. I, I mean, I like them just how they're how they're how they came uh, into fruition. We have these small beaks that make them look a little more avian-like but they're not, they're based off of squid and uh, octopi. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know, is there any anyone else here? Because if there isn't anybody watching, then uh, there really isn't much um, incentive for me to draw. I, I mean, I could draw this without talking to you people. Oh, I don't think there is anybody. Uh, no, nobody is here. Let me check quickly. If there is somebody, then I can continue drawing. No, I don't think there is actually. Is there? No. Uh, okay, then. Let's, con I'll continue drawing then by myself. I'm really sorry that uh, this stream wasn't the best. I kept going in and out, and disconnecting. I don't know what's, what's going on. I hope that uh, next time it will be more consistent. Oh, someone came back. I was just saying that um, I'm sorry that the stream do didn't work that well because you know, I kept uh, disconnecting and 
uh, next time I'll try to fix all of the problems. But still, I think as for a first stream, this isn't bad. Somebody showed up, and that's always nice. Plus, I know all of you. Uh, there are, you're all subscribers. And, um, you know, if if somebody else comes along, uh, that's always great. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, as I was saying, I am designing now the face of these characters and the side uh, so that the other illustrators can use them as reference for when they'll start creating cards with creatures of this uh, race. Uh, I'll also create a few. No, actually, let's keep the stream going. I'm liking it how it's. Uh, I'm liking. I like drawing, that's what I'm trying to say. And uh, I'll draw for another bit. Okay. Plus, I like this race of creatures and. I like how they came up, how, how they look. I will uh, add a few variants. For example, head variants. There's this one with the floppy head back here. And maybe juveniles can have a maybe this sort of, of head. Something like this. And ears, they have these sort of like uh, ear holes that um, remind you of birds. And they kind of remind you of birds, don't they? A little bit. What is this? Let's get rid of this. And let's go inside and draw some more details on these creatures. Sorry, uh, I don't know, maybe I can put some music in, in these streams so that it's not as boring, especially because it's so hard to keep talking and uh, English is not my first language and after a while my brain just goes numb. Okay, this is a nice head, female head, or juvenile. And let's have a more octopus-like head. Maybe a big beak. So I'm just drawing variants at this point. Oh, I think they do have some... Wait, let me see. No, they don't. Oh, I forgot about the eyes. They have these awesome looking horizontal eyes um, that are based off of octopuses or octopi. Okay. No, the beak is, the beak is a little too big. I'm trying to explore all of the possible uh, faces that 
these creatures can have. So this, this, let's say, this is an old man, old uh, male. Maybe they can even have four tentacles here in front. Maybe something like this, like a beak and two tentacles here, like a mustache, and then another two. And have like eyes. Big massive eyebrows. And a big head. Do you have any other questions about uh, the Mothership trading card game? Also, I'm very sorry that um, the stream keeps um, connecting. I'll try to find out why this happens and uh, fix all of the problems in my next stream. And as I've said, I, I'm thinking about starting to uh, stream trading card games so that I can attract people from Twitch, not only from uh, YouTube, you know, my uh, subscribers and all of that, fans. Uh, I want to expand my audience. That is kind of the purpose of these streams. Also, uh, of course, I, 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 the, pur the main purpose is uh, I want to create these designs and I want to make the, these creatures. But also, I could be doing this by myself without talking to you. And the purpose of it being on stream is to attract new viewers and new fans to the game. And if you don't know what I'm doing, what, the, what this game is, uh, you can check out below my trading card game series um, on YouTube. Not trading card game series. Uh, let's make a trading card game series. It's more of a how-to video series about my video game card game. My God. Okay, so we have two Variants here, two uh, heads. Let's add another one here, maybe a more pointy head. I'm really liking this uh, this race. Let's draw this one, and I think we can call it a day, call it a stream. Uh, if you have anything else to add, please do, because I'm going to stop streaming soon. Once I finish this, um, no, actually, I'll I'll draw some garments for these creatures. What's going on? Okay, no, everything's fine. Yeah, I think it's only you, Mr. Blitzer. Sorry. Still, I'm very sorry that this stream is, you know, <laughs> I'm disconnecting and then reconnecting again. And please understand, this is my second time ever streaming and on my last stream nobody came there was z literally zero zero viewers so i just decided I, I would stop talking for like huge chunks of it will you be planning to put this idea onto kickstarter when the first set is complete actually i want to create a kickstarter before the set is complete i mean what do you mean by uh, the set is complete the cards are almost complete the art will take a long time to create and um, it's not like I'm not paying uh, Vasily or 
Ivan. They, at least I'm, I mean, they, they intend to be getting paid. I'm not paying them right now because I don't have the money. But the idea is that the Kickstarter will pay for the, for, for this project. And it really depends on how many people are interested in the game. If, if I, I did a few calculations and uh, it looks like I need like 3,000 or 4,000 subscribers uh, before I start my Kickstarter campaign in order to raise enough money for me to actually complete the game and, and make a, an online version. Because I want to make it a dual thing, both a physical version and a uh, online version. Because we're in the first, 21st century, who plays trading card games other than you know old school trading card game fans? If you uh, make one dual game where if you buy real life cards, you get a code that you can put it online and you get the same cards online, then it's like having two, I don't know. It's like having a movie about Spider-Man and a cartoon about Spider-Man. And uh, I don't know. and. Uh, comic book about Spider-Man. If you like comic books, maybe you'll read the comic book. If you like movies, maybe you'll go and see the movie. If you like cartoons, maybe you'll go and see the cartoon. Same thing here. If you like uh, real, you know, tabletop games, um, analog games, let's say that, um, then maybe you'll play the analog version, the real life version. If you like sitting in front of a computer and uh, not interacting with the players much, then maybe you'll prefer the the online version. And you know, it's hard to get enough momentum to you know it's hard to get enough momentum before your first game is finished to uh, get as many people as you need to back a project that they don't know will will be uh, successful. And uh, right now I'm not even close to starting a Kickstarter. I need to, you know, get as many people rallied up as possible. And you can help, Mr. Blitze. And um, anybody can help. Just talk about um, your trading, this trading card game with your friends. This, Wednesday, probably, I will give you a deck. And of course, you need someone to play with. So uh, tell your friends about this trading card game. And, you know, I can give them a deck. And then, you know, uh, if you tell three people, I can give uh, the other three decks to those three people. And you can play in your little group of friends. Yes, exactly. The Pokemon TCG has done exactly that. Uh, that's where I got the idea from. Thanks for the support. Uh, I, I am burnt out, honestly. I, I'm finishing this stream. Thank you for staying till the end. And thanks for all of you who are watching this. Uh, later in the future and uh, I'll come back Sunday and maybe even sooner uh, I don't know how to end this stream anyway uh, thanks for showing up and uh, keep it up and bye am I here where am I I cannot see oh ah no, my stream crashed. Well, it's bound to happen. It's first stream, so this is all happening live. All these uh, problems. Okay, Photoshop. Where did the chat go? Ah. Uh... Oh, now it's there. Is it there? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, okay. Reconnected? Yeah, I am reconnected. 
all of these technical difficulties already, and uh, I've been streaming for maybe three minutes. Where is my pen? Oh, I dropped my pen. Okay. Come on. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Is it working? Can you see me? Can you hear me? What's going on? What's the problem? Let's close a few tabs. Maybe this will work.